Hey guys, welcome back to Bait and Tackle. Today, we are going to make some epic rainbow trouts, and we're gonna do it in the epic boss mold. And this is kind of inspired by Nick Rundle, who I know you guys all know, the bait cave. So, Nick, we're gonna do this for you. You said you wanted to see my version of this. Here is the rainbow trout that I make. Dusted. Very slick little bait. That's an epic pud. We're gonna do that, but we're gonna do it in an upscale version with the boss. So let's get going. We gotta skin pour these first, and then we're gonna do the dusting, and then we'll do the pouring. So we gotta mix up the colors. We've gotta do it all in this video. So let's do it. Stay tuned. Okay guys, so just, just to let you give you a little heads up here. So I already have some clear plastic with a pretty good size glitter in it, black glitter. I want to say it is the 0.62, maybe it's the next one down 0.35. But we're going to go ahead and heat this up and do the skin pours. So as I'm getting the molds prepped, I've got the plastic heating up. One thing I wanted to tell you was I put a lot of heat stabilizer in this just to get it to go in. I cut up the the piece the puck into pieces so I could reuse it. And then once we get that done, after it gets heated up a little bit, I'm going to stick it in the degassing chamber and vacuum out all the air bubbles and moisture. And then we'll, we'll we may have to zap them more time, and then we'll pour our skin molds. Okay guys, we got all the air bubbles out. I'm gonna grab a seat here, get in front of my tray, set these off to the side. We're gonna do one at a time. We're gonna start on the back side. We're gonna start back at that back fin. I got the plastics hot and we got all the air bubbles out. I want to see a lot of that flake, so I just want to make sure that I don't get rid of it. So I'm just going to let it kind of run out. That came out great. You guys can see that. So we're going to go ahead and repeat the process. Do all four of these pieces. About this mold is that it's got a um, skinny part right here so make sure you hold it back by where the thick aluminum is and that way you don't get burned or use gloves I probably should be as many times as I've gotten burned <laughs> so this one is going to be a little different you got to hold it on the other end so I'm going to be very careful not to burn. actually I'm going to start back with the tail and just go forward just a little different. Make sure I'm very careful on my fingers here. We're good there. Same thing again. I think I'm gonna. I guess it's just, it's just awkward having the camera here trying to pour this the right way. So we're just gonna go ahead and do the same thing. Last one. close for comfort there on my finger. But we're good. Okay, I don't see any bubbles. I'm just going to check. Make sure there's no bubbles. Usually get some bubbles or, or uh, gaps right where the, the belly is. But looks like all of them are good. So now we've got our skin pores done. I'm also going to trim off the excess and then we can get to dusting.
start with this one, this half. And like I said, we're going to match this bait. We're going to match this bait. We're going to make a rainbow trout. So what we're going to do is we're going to paint the eye socket black, the fins black, and then the only other thing we got to color is I did a pink color on the gill plate, and then I painted the head this goldish um, green color. So we're going to use that for that part. So let's go ahead and color the eye black. And again, if you see my other dusting videos, um, you can use pretty much any brush you want. Uh, I like to use, this is actually one of my favorite brushes now that I got from Michaels. And it's in the paint, the painting aisle, like where all the acrylic paints are, where all the, where they sell all the little paint brushes. And this is a 12, it's like a 12 aught angular shader, so it's really tiny. And it says it's a level 2 special brush, but it's an angular shader. 12, 12 slash 0. So again, I'm going to color the eye socket black. And we're going to go ahead and do the fins. And the best part about doing this mold in particular is that you've got so much space to work. Doing those little ones, it's a little bit tougher because you got to have a pretty small brush and you just got to take your time and make sure that you get everything the way you want it. So again, color everything the way you want to. And you could change the colors up, you could do whatever you want to do, be creative, use something else. I know I've like I've done some gold before that comes out pretty well. Maybe not on the rainbow trout pattern, but I've used it on some different different color schemes, but it doesn't have to be black. I just I kind of like the black aspect of this. Kind of gives it a dark contrast. Okay, and if you move this, I mean you don't need a ton of that color, but if you move it around enough, you'll get what you're looking for. So that's good go ahead and do this fin. It's a lot longer on this bait than the other ones. So I'm just going to take my time, use a little bit here and there get the whole thing covered. Okay, so we're all set with the black. Now I'm going to go ahead and paint the gill plate with this pink color. And again, these are just mica powders. You can get a pack of mica powders pretty cheap off of and I just like to dab the brush on something hard like this just to get some of the extra black off. But you can get these colors you can get like a pack of assorted colors, pretty cheap on Amazon. I, bought, I think I bought one that was like 18 bucks, and it'll give you a pretty good palette. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually like make my own gill plate here because it's not really defined on this one. So I'm going to do this. And I think that's kind of how I'm going to roll it right there. And then you can blow out a little bit extra. Then we're going to take the green, which I wanted to show you this one because this is a separate color I had to order. I got this little package by Eye Candy, and they sell this one, which is called Green Onion. And it's a, uh, there's a whole bunch of green shades in this pack that comes with this. And I can't remember how much I spent on it. That might have been a little bit more pricey because it was kind of specialized. But this is a really nice, like, green color, but it's got gold in it like gold flake in it so it comes out really nice so I'm going to go ahead and use that for the head and then 
then once I get this all good to go the way I want it, I am going to go ahead and off camera, I'm just going to go ahead and do the other ones, or I'll just do it and do a time lapse. Because we're only doing two baits here, so it shouldn't be too difficult to, too time consuming to do that, what we want to do. And again, I'm just following the lines for the, the head portion on the actual bait itself. right next to that pink. Just making sure everything is painted the way I want. And I think I'm happy with that. Give it a little blowout just to get all the extra out of there, but that's what we're gonna that's what we're looking at doing. So we need to paint the head with the green and gold the eye socket black, the, the fin black, and the anal fin black. So let's go ahead and we're going to finish this up and I'm going to do the other three and then we will put them back together and we will start pouring. out and getting these things on the hot plate and mixing up all of our colors which I'm pretty sure we don't have any of that stuff ready to go I'm gonna check and see if I have any leftover plastic from last time but I don't think I do so I'm gonna have to probably make up some new so guys um, I just wanted to show you my plastic setup and what I've got is I've got three five gallon buckets this is kind of a mix of everything that I had left over and put some hardener in it to make it like a medium plastic. This is like a firmer uh, swim bait plastic. I think it's like a, I don't know, medium hard I think is what it is, bait plastics. And then this is the super tough 
uh, saltwater plastic, which is very hard to use, so I probably won't be doing any dusting with this anymore. I tried doing it, it's very difficult. But with this, I'm going to use for most of my bigger swim baits, like 5 inch, 6 inch, and bigger, like the boss. So we're going to use this, and what I did was I bought these covers that clip onto the tops of the buckets, and you just unscrew them so they got screw lids. And then what I did was I cut down a paddle, one of these paddles, to fit in the bucket. So the paddle is going to stay in the bucket, and I just used my drill here. The paddle... stay in the bucket when I'm done. So I'm going to stir it up real good. I'm going to get my plastic going. And then we'll mix up some colors. And I do have green already ready to go. So. Okay, so I'm going to take one, each one of these cups of plastic. I got it all mixed up real good. Got about two cups worth of plastic in here. Might be a little bit too much, but what we're gonna do, I like to heat it up first. Give it a good three minutes to heat up, and then we'll keep checking it. And one of these colors is going to be a bubblegum pink. Mountain bleed, so we'll probably use that, because I don't think I have a dead-on plastics one. I don't, so we're gonna go ahead and use this. I'll get that mixed up good and we're probably going to throw a little bit of this one in here i'm not sure what this one is called one of the paragon colorants but it's it's got a real nice shimmer to it you probably can't see it but I just i'm just going to put a little bit in there just to give it a little bit extra something and then the other one is just going to be a pearl white which i have pearl white and and some mf so i'm going to mix that up that'll be the bottom color and then the green is already mixed up. I already have that sitting here, so we're just going to go ahead and use this one. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and do these colors as they come out of the microwave. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the pearl white first for the belly. We're going to go ahead and pour that, and then we will go ahead and make up the pink while we're doing, while we're doing the white. I'll start heating up that plastic for the pink. We'll just do this one step at a time. And like I said, I've got to use the, the degassing chamber or the vacuum pot to get some of the air bubbles, the air bubbles and moisture out of the plastic. So we'll just go ahead and do that. But right now I'm just trying to get the colorant mixed up a little bit before it comes out so I can do that. And I may need to buy some more of this, although I have some powder, some pearl white uh, powder paint powder to go into colorant for the uh, the plastic tube that I need to probably use up before I buy any more. But this is the MF Pearl White and it works really well. So we we'll just put it in there for another minute. Right now we are at 350 so that's perfect. What we're gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and put in my coloring now. I want a fair amount because I don't want this to be crazy translucent, but I want it to be a nice pearl white powder, pearl white color. So, pretty nice pearly. It's a little bit translucent right now. I want to go ahead and add some more. Yeah, I don't do drops here. I usually just squirt it in, see, it, see how thick we can get it. I don't have very much pearl white powder or pearl white color left. It's still, still a little bit translucent. So what, what sometimes what I do is I'll take some white and I'll go ahead and just put a couple drops of white in there to lighten it up. Just a little bit. That way it'll give it a little bit more pearl white, white, white too. There we go. There we go. Okay, so it's still a little bit translucent, but it's but it's mainly a full body pearl white now. Okay. So good there. I'm gonna go ahead and throw it in the vacuum pot and we'll be right back. Okay, so I'm zapping the white real quick. I'm gonna turn on the hot plate. 
I'm going to set mine to 225. That's about good for me. I think that brings it up to roughly 300. I've got my molds in the middle of the hot plate. And we're just zapping this real quick. Like I said, check the temperature, mix it up. And I think we're good to go. We're 240 right now. 340, I'm sorry. And I think that'll be fine for what we're doing here. I just want to make sure we don't have any air bubbles. A little bit of a torch here just to take off the edge. And we're just going to go ahead, while this is warming up, I'm just going to go ahead and pour the first layer. I want to bring the first layer up. Pretty good. Still wanted that hook slot to be visible. So we'll probably go to yeah, maybe a little bit more, maybe like to the top of that fin. The side fin. I think that that'll be a good uh, good line, a good mark to follow. So you go ahead and fill the other one up. I'm just going ahead and trying to like pour down the hook slot portion, just, like I said, we're going to take it right up to the top of the fin for the most part, just a little bit, and we're going to stop. So, the white pearl has been poured. It's in a good spot for both right now. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to heat up the plastic for the pink. And I'm going to go ahead and mix this coloring up because it's separated quite a bit. See it there? It's dark and light here. I'm going to try to try to get it as best as I can. These have been sit this one's been sitting for a little while. So. But I'm going to go ahead and mix this up real good. We're going to put a little bit of this uh, color shift in there. And I've already pre-cut the green. You can see that. But I went ahead and pre-cut up the green cup and put some heat stabilizer in there so we can make sure that that doesn't mushroom a cloud on us. We don't want a nuke going off down here in the basement. So, so we're going to go ahead, like I said, get this heated up, get the color mixed up, we're going to do the pink layer next. Okay guys, so we're going to go ahead and mix up the pink. Now, I actually got a other pink that I had sitting here from Lure craft. So I'm going to go ahead and mix that up. And again, I want this to be, it can be a little bit translucent, but I want it to be pretty pink. So I'm going to go ahead and put in quite a bit of pink. And actually, one of them is kind of light a little bit lighter than what I like, or what I actually like, so that, that's actually perfect right there. Okay, and we're going to put in a little bit of this Paragon effect. Not a ton, because I don't know how much you're actually going to see in the bake, inside the skin pour. Or to give it a little bit of a shimmer, shine. Yeah, that'll work. So I'm going to go ahead and Degas this pink layer and heat it up again, probably. And we'll be back to pouring. in there just to get it a little bit more firmer 
because this is such a big swim bait, I wanted to make sure that we had enough to do that. So I went ahead and poured a little bit in there. It's a little bit of a gooey mess right now. So we're still heating up everything. And the last time I just poured the pink, my audio crapped out on me. So I'm gonna probably just do something with that footage or maybe I'll just dump my voice over top of it. I don't know, but I'll fix it. So we're waiting for the green to heat up and then we will come back and pour the last layer. We've got the green at a good temperature, but I'm gonna go ahead, it's got bubbles in it because of the, uh, because of the, I'm trying to get this in there without knocking the camera off. Because of the hardener that I put in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and let that degas in the chamber get that out of there when it's done and we might zap it one more time just because it might have too much air in it and then we will pour the final layer all right I think this is going to be the last one I've got this pretty much where I want it temperature wise I've got most of the air bubbles out a couple tiny ones left but I don't think it's really going to make too big of a difference hopefully they'll just rise to the top but we're going to go ahead Fill the cavities all the way up. If there's a little bit extra, that's okay. We can um, take whatever is left over on the top and cut it off around the outside edge of the mold. It'll, it'll come off really easy. Put it up, it'll, the beauty of these molds is they have a nice sharp edge on them. See, I, I'm a little a little overboard there. So I'm going to let those heat up for a little bit. I'm keeping it at the temperature. Do the spit test. It does sizzle. What I'm going to do is let it sit for about, like I said, I think 10 minutes. And then I'll come back, turn the heat off, and let them cool down right on the hot plate. Then that way they've got significant time to just ease the heat down and that way you don't have the indenting in the top of the baits. I'll probably still have a little bit, but not as bad as if I just leave them. And another thing I like to do is take this uh, butane torch and just go ahead and go over top of the bait just to get any existing air bubbles out of there. Give it a nice fine edge and it might flare up on you on fire sometimes. Just blow it out. And it also blends in the um, the skin pour if there is skin there and it makes a nice bond so I just like to go ahead and go over top of the, the edge of it then that way it gets the skin pour in the, in the top layer nice and blended together like I said sometimes it catches because of the pigment and stuff and the, and the uh, colorant and stuff like that but again just blow it out it's fine again I just use this little torch and I got it on Amazon you gotta buy the butane to fill it up but I use it religiously. I do it in the cups. I do it in the cups when I'm, uh, let me see if I can zoom out here. I do it in the cups when I'm, you know, in between, like putting it in the, the, gas and chain, the gas and chamber and the microwave, just to get the air bubbles off the top. And it helps tremendously. So again, we're gonna wait about 10 minutes with this heat, and then we're gonna turn it off. And then I'm gonna let it rest for probably about a half an hour and we'll come back and demold and see what we got. Okay guys, you ready for the demold? I'll turn the fan off. You're probably still gonna be able to hear the laundry, but at least it'll be, won't be as bad. So we're gonna go ahead and take these apart. And we're gonna go ahead and fix this tail. I'm just gonna go ahead and find a timer set. <laughs> go ahead and trim off this excess. There we go. Dig it a little bit up here. Just want to make sure that there's no extra doo doo on the edge. I think we're ready. You guys ready? I'm ready. Of course, it comes off on the other one. Look at that trout. That is amazing. That's one giant trout, I'll tell you. So what we're going to do is we're going to 
I'm going to put these in a cool bath for a little bit and we will let them sit for a little while and actually while well, I got this here let's go ahead and get this one open too. We're going to let them sit in a cold water bath for a little bit and then I'm going to try to find some good eyeballs to put on them. We'll go ahead and do that. There we go. Look at those. Look at those monster trouts. Beautiful. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. Amazing. Love it. They're a little hot still. Burning my hands. So we're going to go ahead and like I said, put them in water, let them cool down for a little bit, and then we will uh, come back and put some eyeballs on and wrap up this video. Well, I finally picked out the eyeballs that I want. These are Glacier. So I'm going to use those. Put that focus in there. I'm going to use those. Pretty realistic eyeball. And we're going to go ahead and put them on these baits. And guys, these came out so good. I'm just going to put a Good sized dot of glue there. And I'm going to go ahead and place it. I'm going to go ahead and do both sides. Yeah, I do like these realistic looking eyes. I, I found some other eyes, but I decided to go with these. And uh, a 13 inch eye really fits this cavity smooth, but uh, a 12 inch eye is fine. It, it actually fits really well. So 12 is the only one that I could find that has a lot of variety of different different eyes and whatnot. So. So there you have it, guys. I was a little bit disappointed in how the, the the bottom came out. The white was a little bit off. I would have liked to have seen that white a little bit more pearly, maybe a little bit more trans, translucent. But other than that, they came out fantastic. I mean, I don't know if these are going to be used for musky baits or if these are going to be used for something else, but I'll tell you what, I mean, they came out spectacular. That's a pretty killer epic trout right there, epic boss trout. Very realistic. Amazing. Well, that's going to wrap it up for today's video, guys. I hope you really enjoyed that. I mean, I thoroughly enjoyed making these. This is amazing. I can't wait to actually use these or give these to somebody that's going to use them. That's a pretty slick bait right there. Anyway, I know we're coming up on 500 subscribers. I am going to do a big giveaway. These probably won't be in it, but the ones that I made in the previous video are going to be in it. A lot of other stuff that I've made. I've got some hardware to give away, a bunch of different swim baits. And I've given a preview on Instagram, so go check that out. Please like, comment, share, subscribe. If there's anything you guys want to know about the process or anything like that, comment down below. I will get back to you and help you through any issues you're having or just, you know, in general, just give you some guidance. So thanks for watching and remember, keep on baiting.